Thank you, Andre, for your gracious words, for your very emotional words. God bless that young lad. God bless those two officers in New York City, and God bless all the victims and relatives of victims of gun violence. And thank you for your leadership as a general matter. Uh, to you, to uh, Public Safety Director Jerry Spezial, to Police Chief Ibrahim Mike Bake, Bako, Bakora, Congressman, earlier this week, birthday boy, former mayor of Patterson, Bill Pascrell. Uh, and we all know that Patterson's best days are ahead of us. And it is a proud and historic city that will only build from here. And we will see it go to bigger and greater heights. Also an honor to be joined by Acting Attorney General Andrew Bruck. Andrew, as always, State Police Superintendent Colonel Pat Callahan. I think we're going to be on the weather beat over the next 48 hours, Pat. Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter. Assemblyman, the coach, Benji Wimberly. God bless you. Passaic County Sheriff Richard Burdnick. Commissioner Terry Duffy. Always an honor, gentlemen. To my right, President Pat Colligan, Executive Vice President Mark Kovar from the New Jersey State Policemen's Benevolent Association and State Troopers Fraternal Association President Wayne Blanchard. Great to have you guys with us. Dr. Lisa Liza Ch Chowdhury from Reimagining Justice and so many from across our broad community advocacy community. To get today and together, we are here to announce a more than $7 million investment in public safety and in the tools and resources our police need to combat the epidemic of gun violence that has become all too common in too many communities. This investment is made possible through the state's discretionary pot of federal American Rescue Plan funds that we have prioritized to reduce gun violence. And I not only thank President Biden for his commitment to making public safety a cornerstone of our nation's coronavirus response and recovery, I stand with him and his administration and his commitment to investing in our police. Our plan begins with a significant new investment in gunshot detection technology, technology that can alert police to a location of a shooting within seconds before that first 911 call can even come in so that they can respond much quicker. This technology is already in use in multiple communities across the state, including here in Patterson. Not only has it proven accurate, but it has also proven its ability to direct police resources to the site of a shooting within mere moments. Not only will we be able to expand the footprint of this technology within these communities, but we'll be able to bring it into new communities where gun violence threatens the peace and security of our residents. And our investment also includes, just as critically, automatic license plate reader technologies that can further assist police in their investigations by identifying the vehicles which suspect, suspected shooters may use to flee the scene of their crimes. Some shootings have no witnesses, save the victim and shooter. In other instances, residents may not have the time as they try to protect themselves to mentally note things that can be important to a police investigation. And unfortunately, in some cases, witnesses and residents may be fearful of reprisal if they provide information regarding a shooting to police. Whatever the instance, these technologies can quickly and accurately fill critical gaps. We know that time lost in either responding to or investigating a shooting cannot be reclaimed. In Patterson last year, and Andre went through some of the statistics, and by the way, may these never just become numbers, there were a total of 110 shootings. And across the year, 18 residents were killed by gun violence. Both of these numbers were down from 2020. But make no mistake, I know Andre and the team will agree with me, it's 110 and 18, respectively, too many. Statewide, we recorded a total of 1,112 shootings claiming a total of 248 lives. Across New Jersey in 2021, and Pat will correct the record if I don't get this right, the New Jersey State Police and their county and local law enforcement partners made 2,123 gun arrests, 
41 percent of which were individuals with a felony conviction on their record, 38 percent of whom had been previously arrested for a gun-related violation specifically, and 12 percent of whom had previously been involved in a shooting. Combating gun violence is a multifaceted problem that requires, <clears throat> excuse me, a multifaceted approach. So today, there's more. I'm also proud to announce that our administration is releasing more than $8 million in funds for community-based violence intervention efforts to 25 grassroots, amen, to 25 different grassroots organizations, including two organizations providing services right here in Patterson and who I know are with us this morning, Reimagining Justice and the Juvenile Education and Awareness Project. Congratulations to both of those organizations. Amen. Supporting the efforts of these organizations will not only be game-changing in the life of the communities they serve, but also in the lives of individuals they reach and successfully turn away from mistakenly seeking violence as a solution for anything. And finally, we are not for one moment going to be deterred in our effort to strengthen our gun safety laws to keep guns out of the wrong hands. Across our first four years together, we reasserted New Jersey's gun safety leadership with the successful passage of two rounds of smart laws. And now we have proposed another comprehensive round of gun safety measures. These are common sense measures that are critical in this fight. And I recommit to work alongside Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, Assemblyman Benji Wimberly, and their colleagues to get these bills passed and put on my desk. With the U.S. Supreme Court poised to take aim at common sense restrictions on concealed carry, the need for these measures is greater than ever. In New Jersey, we wholly reject the idea that the solution to gun violence is more guns on our streets. In a perfect world, we would not need to make these investments or fight for these new laws. But as we all know, we do not live in a perfect world. We live in a nation with unfortunately unacceptable levels of gun violence, and sometimes good people get caught in the middle with horrific results. Andre mentioned him, but I think of 18-year-old Robert Quadra, a promising young man from right here in Patterson, a scholarship acceptance at Montclair State, to the best of my knowledge, who was caught in the crossfire between two gunmen and senselessly killed last week. At the time of his murder, by the way, he was bringing groceries to his grandmother. We also keep in our thoughts the two New York City police officers, again, who Andre mentioned, who lost their lives in the line of duty this past weekend, officers Wilbert Mora and Jason Rivera, as they responded to a domestic dispute between a man with a gun and his mother in Harlem. I've been back and forth several times with Mayor Eric Adams over this tragedy. We cannot be complacent. We cannot think that just because one of us may live in a community that hasn't experienced an incident of gun violence that we are somehow immune. While we know that cities like Paris, Patterson experience these tragedies most routinely, we have seen shootings across our country and our state in every type of setting, urban, suburban, rural. So until every neighborhood and every community is safe from gun violence, our job is not done. We are not going to give up. We are going to make sure our police have the tools and resources they need to combat gun violence. We're going to continue to work alongside dedicated residents, leading community-based violence intervention programs whose efforts are so important. And we're going to continue to push for the strong gun safety laws we need to keep guns out of the wrong hands in the first place. I would be remiss before I ask the Attorney General to come up if I did acknowledge all the advocacy groups, the folks that are on the streets preventing violence to happen in the first place. Amen and the advocates who are out there all across our state, all across our country, Moms Demand Action are in the house. I know you're wearing your red t-shirts even though you're bundled up. With that, please help me welcome the Acting Attorney General for the great state of New Jersey, Andrew Bruck. Good morning, everybody. I cannot think of a better reason to be outside on a Thursday in January than talking about an issue like this. 
Um, thank you, Governor. Thank you, Congressman, Mayor, Director, Assemblywoman, Dr. Chowdhury, our friends in state, local, and county law enforcement, Prosecutor Valdez, Colonel Callahan, uh, so many folks in the city of Patterson, Wayne, Pat, all of our friends in law enforcement. Uh, it's great to be here this morning. Um, but in particular, I want to thank the governor for prioritizing this issue. Uh, I want to thank the governor for recognizing that as we work, as we work to reduce gun violence, we all have a role to play. Police, prosecutors, community members, clergy, nonprofits, local officials, elected officials, all united in a shared mission to keep our communities safe. Because the reality is, is that since the start of COVID, gun violence is going up in this country. And New Jersey is not immune to this particular virus. And we know that a disproportionate number of folks who are shot and killed by guns in this state are people of color. And in particular, young men from black and brown communities. That is unacceptable. And we have a moral obligation to confront this problem head on with all of the resources that we have. The, the governor explained that we're making available $7 million in law enforcement technology, but I want to explain to you why that really matters. Because if you talk to anyone who studies this issue, they will tell you that the vast majority of gun violence in a particular community is driven by a relatively small number of folks who have access to illegal firearms. And the way that you address that problem is through a targeted enforcement strategy that goes after the most dangerous folks in the community. Now, as someone who started his career in government as a violent crime prosecutor in Newark, I can tell you it's actually really difficult to make these cases for some of the reasons that the governor said. Witnesses are uncomfortable coming forward. It's difficult to trace illegal guns, especially if they're ghost guns. Police manpower is stretched thin, dealing with violent crime that comes too often. And one of the only ways that we can get an upper hand in this fight is by investing in the law enforcement technology that makes it easier for us to solve these crimes in the first place. By investing in gunshot detection equipment, by investing in cameras and automated license plate readers, integrating that into a central dispatch system so we can get ahead of the criminals and actually hold them accountable. And and it increases the likelihood that if you shoot and kill someone, we're going to catch you, and we're going to arrest you, and we're going to hold you accountable. We're going to take you off the streets and make the community safer. But that targeted enforcement strategy also serves another purpose. It allows us to ensure that we focus on the most significant threats in the community. And that we don't repeat the same mistakes that we made during earlier eras, when in response to a rise in violent crime, we locked up too many people for low level nonviolent offenses. We have to focus on those who are actually driving violence in the community. That's how we make the community safer. And by pairing it with community-based violence intervention programs, we can actually make progress on this. We can actually drive gun violence down. There are strategies that work. We know how to do it. We are implementing them, and we will continue doing it. And we will demonstrate that we can protect public safety while building community trust, that those two things are not in opposition, that they are actually inseparable. That's something that this governor gets 
It's something that this mayor gets, that all the people who are here to get, something that law enforcement in New Jersey understands. And it's why I'm so proud to be here as part of this announcement and so proud to support this administration as we work to reduce gun violence. Thank you very much. Thank again the Acting Attorney General, Andrew. That was outstanding, uh, outstanding remarks. I apologize for having uh, skipped acknowledging the prosecutor, so thank you for helping me out, correcting the record. Uh, this is the second event I've been with this guy at this week. Uh, the first one was on infrastructure and deploying federal money with the most densely populated state in America and getting more federal money to help us at, a, at an already all-time high investment in infrastructure will transform the state. Uh, and here we are talking about technology and investment, again, with the help of our federal partners to save lives and address the scourge of gun violence. On both of those fronts and on so many others, I do not know where we would be without him. Your former mayor, outstanding congressman, will still acknowledge that he's the birthday boy. This is the birthday week. Please help me welcome Congressman Bill Pascrell. Thank you, Governor. Thirty-two years ago, I stood in this very spot when we passed and Governor Florio signed it, the assault weapon bill, first in the United States. We have the strongest laws in the entire country, Governor, in many ways. Attorney General, Superintendent, Sheriff, Freeholders, Assemblymen, and we're here today. That's not a good omen. And when I stood here and spoke, there were police on the garage across the street. I had to wear a flak jacket. And I wouldn't wear it. They insisted you can't go out there unless you wear it. In the greatest country in the world, we have not resolved, we have not resolved that we're going to make things better in terms. In fact, here's what I said 32 years ago. I said the most important part of in some manner, shape, or form controlling the use of those weapons that were out in the street then and they're out in the street now was to protect our law enforcement officers. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. So all of these politicians, and I'm one of them, all these politicians who brag about how important law enforcement is, what are we doing to give them the resources? When it comes down to life or death issues, do you know why we've waited so long to bring the technology to Patterson, New Jersey, or many other cities and towns throughout the United States of America, because we didn't have the technology. And you know why we didn't have the technology? Many of our police officers belong to the National Rifle Association, and it has many good things to offer the United States of America. But they stopped every significant piece of legislation and getting IDs of weapons easy to the police department. We were not allowed to use those electronics. Imagine that. And the police will tell you how long it takes many times to get that information. Damn it, don't say you're for cops and then you're miles away when it comes for the tough decisions and the tough discussions. It's baloney, baloney. So thank you, Governor, for coming here today. Attorney General Buck, we're honored to have you.
tireless support of our men and women in uniform. I'm repeating myself from 30 years ago, 32. I want the press to know that. They need to be educated. And they know I say it like it is. I don't hold back. Mayor, on flit and flagging champion for law enforcement officers. That's got to be every day. This is not an issue. This is not an issue. Like late trains. This is not an issue. Like getting your street cleaned. I blew out the audio. <laughs> Good news is we have a speaker who doesn't need the audio. <laughs> that, that's another way for saying he's got a big mouth. <laughs> We're proud to announce today $7 million in funding for New Jersey police departments. This funding will come directly from the American Rescue Plan that we passed last year. These funds will help purchase state-of-the-art gunshot detection technologies, videos, cameras, automatic license plate readers that are proven to help suppress gun violence. After we passed the landmark American Rescue Plan, President Joe Biden was quick to make funds immediately available to support our police and combat gun violence in the hardest hit cities. That does matter. We acted for cities exactly like Patterson. You've heard the, the sad statistics, and I will not repeat them. And we, we think of today, and never forget, the 18-year-old Robert Kudra, beloved by his family, his community, and his school. Robert was set to go to college later this year. Some of those who terrorize our streets in our cities, the towns where the town that I live in, used a gun to murder Robert with a stray stray bullet last week. Our police are working harder than ever. They seized over 200 legal guns in Patterson last year. We owe these brave men and women the tools to keep our city safe and find the murderers of innocent victims like Robert. By the weekend, we should have them in hand. No later. There is no more important issue than we get these thugs off the street, particularly 14.5 million for Patterson law enforcement over the past decade alone. That includes the 5.6 million in the cops hiring grants these grants put 30 new officers on Patterson streets. Just last month, we secured a 700,000 federal grant for a crime gun intelligence center in Patterson, Governor, in Patterson. It will be here. The center will allow our police to swiftly track down guns used in crimes. My fellow Pattersonians, you need to call the police when you know where these weapons are and you know they're illegal. They're coming in for several southern states. That's where they're coming from. And we need to get them off the streets. They are a menace not only to every police officer in this city, but to every citizen and every non-citizen in this city. Back in Washington, I'm still running point on the Crime Gun Tracing Modernization Act. That's just a big term. It's a law enforcement gun tracing in the 21st century. And we have to bring gun tracing into the 21st century. We have to have our police with those resources, as well as all the other resources that come through the COPS program. The first COPS program really started in New Jersey under Go Governor Florio. 
So thanks to a crush crushing law, as I mentioned before, imposed at the behest of the National Rifle Association, the federal government is actually barred. This is not for the weak need. This is not if you shy away when there's a problem. And we got to run all the politicians out of town, out of state, out of the country who do not wish to stand up and do their job and protect the citizens of this country. Run them out of town. That's what I say. There's nothing wrong with the NRA. It's the people who run the joint. And some of those people are already on their investigation. Because maybe they didn't spend the money the right way. You got to make a choice. You either are afraid to even mention these things. Or you're not afraid to stand up for you. That's why we got elected. That's why we get a paycheck. Not to say and stand in the middle of every hot issue. Let's adjourn. How the hell do you pick up your paycheck? In good conscience. How do you do that? How do you do that? So we got to search our own records and be able to use state of the art. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms receives more than, listen to this, 1,700 trace requests from local law enforcement each day. Do the math. Each day. And we're still using paper. We're going back to the 19th century. That's how we do it. My, com my common sense bill will finally empower alcohol, tobacco, and firearms to use modern technology. Well, we use it for everybody, everything else. How about using it to save a cop? So I speak less on this issue than I do and have done until I see action. And you got to be in there trying to get the action done with well and more well trained cops on our streets and new gun tracing technologies at their fingertips. The future is brighter for public safety in our state. I'm always going to fight to ensure our police have every resource that they need. My record is my record, not words. The record is the record. Don't make it up as you go along. I want to thank you all for being here today. And I want us to make, the citizens of this city, to make a difference in this critical issue that are going to help save not only police officers' lives, but our lives. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I believe it does. I'm proud of my city. I still live here. And I got elected. They came to my house to give me flowers and candies and everything. Don't forget us. They thought I had to move out because I was a congressman. You ain't getting me out of Patterson until you carry me out. God bless you all for being here. Governor, you've been in Patterson a lot lately. And that's helped making, make it better. Attorney General, we wish you the best of luck in your position. Don't cower to the folks who yell at you. Yell back. Mayor, action. By the weekend, we want this clown picked up. Director, you need me out there on patrol? I'll volunteer. I used to do that. I'll tell you, I'm sorry for taking so long, but the first job when I was the mayor of the city, Alcalde, Magister, I I went with the police. I wanted to do this. I couldn't wait. The second month I was here, that was uh, in uh, August of 1990. And I went with the police officer. He says, look, don't get out of the car, Mayor. I know I was from your neighborhood. Stay in the car. 
whatever I do, don't do. So I went to, first was a domestic. It sounds, matter of prosecutor, that sounds so delightful. <laughs> it's a domestic. <laughs> I watched the police officer go up the stairs and he turned in, the, in about the fifth or sixth step and he said, remember, I said, stay in the car. It's a warm day, September, I think it was. He gets up at the top, he opens the door and there's a woman with a scissors. And the guy comes from behind the door, who they were having a little spat with, scissors. What the heck did he have? He had a knife in his hand. And the cop went in there. Try that on for size. Man, if you got too many drinks, that sobers you up right away. <laughs> and they both meant it. And yet they both turned on the police officer who tried to bring peace to it. Try working in those conditions, Harry. That's part of their job. That's like the state trooper drives up and the car's got these tinted windows. I'd give that guy a $10,000 fine on the spot. You don't know who the hell's sitting in that car. And we're afraid to deal with it. We absolutely are afraid to deal with that issue. And how many people behind those tinted win windows have committed crimes other places, not only there with the police officer or the state trooper there. God bless America. We're here to solve problems, not to talk about them. God bless you. Thank you. Congressman, thank you. I, I take you on your word that they'll have to drag you out of Patterson. <laughs> and let me also say they'll have to drag Patterson out of you. That, neither of those are going to happen. Uh, bless you and thank you for your leadership. It takes a village. You need great leadership in Washington, which we've got, and you're all blessed with to have Congressman Bill Pascrell. You need great mayors, attorney generals. You need a great legislature. We've got two great ones with us today. I mentioned Assemblyman Benji Wimberly. Please help me welcome the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus, which is an extraordinarily important organization, Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, still morning. Um, so I, I want to thank our congressman because there's no other uh, truth storyteller orator just like him. Uh, to our governor, I want to say uh, as chair of the Legislative Black Caucus that leadership matters. I want to thank you uh, for hearing me uh, as we talked in the legislature about additional gun bill packages and what was happening in cities like Patterson and throughout the entire state of New Jersey. The Legislative Black Caucus covers from Cape May all the way up to Hudson County and it is a bipartisan Republican and Democratic caucus. One thing is true that violence has skyrocketed through a pandemic. So in distress, and the faith community has taught me this, we want to find some success and we want to find our deep-rooted, our deep-rooted spirituality. We also want to partner with law enforcement. It's been a trying time. It has been a trying couple of years. But united, we're going to get through this. And being able to talk to each other, because the only way that I know what to ask for in Trenton from our legislative body and from our executive branch is by talking to each of you, is by hearing the voices of families who have lost someone tragically gone too soon, the ripple effect, because not only was one young man's life lost, but his classmates are impacted, his family's impacted. Every person who had a handle or a touch in his life is impacted for life. You don't forget these stories. You don't forget these faces. So the one thing that we can do, and the prosecutor, my prosecutor, my prosecutor, and, and I say this with love because when there's a problem, she and I get on the phone and we talk. I talk through the mental health components of it. She talks through the criminal justice components of it. Our sheriff, Sheriff Burtnick, our commissioners, my assembly colleague, and then my community organizations, let alone my health system, St. Joseph's Hospital, Hackensack Meridian Hospital, who are working with us in partnership because it's just not one pill that will fix this. This is just a small piece of resources 
financial resources that goes into eradicating this problem. It used to be, and I was having this conversation uh, prior to the start of this conference, in the winter, we can plan on strategies on how we were going to combat the summer violence. Now it's happening throughout the course of the year. So there's no downtime. And I say this with all the love that I have. There is no downtime, which means we have to work harder and we can't grow weary in this work that we're doing. I have faith beyond a mustard seed that we are going to get through this together. And it may not end with the congressman who has over 32 years in working with this. It won't end with me as an assemblywoman having 10 years in doing this work. But I do know this. The faces are changing. The partnerships are growing. We are working together with an executive branch, with the federal government, and with the municipal government and a county government to combat these issues. So I don't want us to feel that we need to attack each other, not work with each other, not call in to the hotline, to the tip numbers, to give a tip so that we can help rescue and save our community because we all have a part in this. I live here, I've raised two children here, a black young man who's 22. It means something to me. I was raised here, my brother was raised here, the assemblyman raised four boys here, and we're still here. But we only can do this work if we continue to be steadfast, not grow weary, and make sure that we're talking to each other so we can say we need money for these tools and equipments, that we need money for community services and outreach groups, that we're talking across the state because Patterson's only eight square miles. It's only eight square miles, it's only six wards. So somebody knows something and you can cross over the line and make it into Clifton, you can make it into Passaic, you can make it into Newark, you can make it all the way down to Asbury Park. So it's important that we stay in communication, that law enforcement partners with us, that our executive branch understands our needs and that we're dedicating. Because let's not forget, the rescue funds are taxpayer dollars that have come back in to help us. For years, we talked about not having enough money and resources coming back into New Jersey to support the things that were important to us and are important to us. This is one of those things. So let's document, let's talk to each other, let's keep raising the bar and ask for what we need so we can get the resources that we need to help our community. God bless and thank you. Shavonda, thank you. Really well, well laid out, as always. Um, you mentioned faith, and you mentioned faith leaders, and, and there are many here today with us. And Pat, I think, would uh, endorse this, that not only is their presence on a topic like this so indispensable, but for now almost two years, they have been extraordinary as leaders in our state throughout this pandemic. Um, and, and having said that, the very good news is every single day for the past now two or three weeks, the numbers are starting, continuing to go in the right direction. So please, God, that trend keeps up. Sadly, losses of life are a lagging uh, reality. So we're today well over 100 more confirmed losses of life. So keep all of them and their memories, their families in your prayers. And again, thanks to all of our faith leaders for being there regardless of the challenge, whether it's gun safety, crime, pandemic. Uh, if, if government gets an A plus at everything they do, we still could not prosecute the mission of fairness and justice and health and belief that we do in this state without them. With that, two, two more speakers, uh, each representing incredibly important uh, perspectives. First up, please help me welcome the outstanding public safety director of the Patterson, Jerry Spezial. Jerry. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm gonna cut it short, but what I do wanna say is, I speak to our mayor just about every single day, and Pat Murray, our captain of in Special Investigations, because they're laser focused and they are so concerned about the gun violence, and then, the phone never is not answered, or do I never not receive a call from our prosecutor, from our colonel, from our sheriff, 
from all of our partners in law enforcement. And that includes you, General. I've re if you remember that Sunday call where we talked for almost an hour about some of the issues, that is so important to us. The men and women of the Patterson Police Department, you are an extraordinary group of individuals and you are so talented and I know you care about what you do every single day. I am proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with each and every one of you and our partners. It is a tremendous honor. And Governor, thank you. This technology, we are doing things inside and I don't want to give up the trademark secrets or Pat will have me later, but we have such training going on with what you are putting together, you have put the piece in the puzzle for us that is going to be tremendous in helping us fight this gun violence. We just started and you came running through. So thank you for that. To our intervention, it's, a com it's an important component. We appreciate what you do. We recognize what you do. We understand we can't arrest our way out of these problems. So together, we will make it work. And here's how I will end for you, the men and women of law enforcement. What can I say to all of you that do so much and ask for so little? Thank you. Thank you for what you do every single day. And for the partnerships, and for the partnerships together, it will unleash the power of the many to do what none of us can do alone. Thank you. Jerry, that was great. And, and we could have had any number of members of law enforcement speak, and uh, I think all of your colleagues will agree those were right on the money, and thanks for everything you and your colleagues do every single day. Um, you, you mentioned intervention. You mentioned prevention. I don't think the average resident of the state appreciates the value of the investment and the work that folks do to get out ahead of the violence and the gun violence in particular that these organizations do, which is why, you know, you, you add up the money, $15.2 million we're announcing today, split about evenly between technology on the one hand, but investment in 25 outstanding organizations whose sole mission exists to prevent the gun violence from occurring, to bend the arc of people's lives toward a more positive, safer direction. And the work is indispensable. So last but not least, representing that community, Dr. Liza Chowdhury, who is the co-founder of Reimagining Justice. I want to bring some of my team members here who have been doing this work for a long time. It's not right for me to just stand up here because it's their work that I stand, stand on. So on behalf of Reimagining Justice Inc.'s Patterson Healing Collective Program, I'm extremely honored to represent the community-based activists who have worked tirelessly to support the community in times of tragedy. Our city recently lost a young king by the name of Robert Quadra, along with countless other victims that had so many hopes and dreams. We can't afford, as a city, to lose any more of our loved ones. It is their memory that keeps us fighting so hard. Thank you, Governor Murphy and A.G. Brook, for believing in this work by not only supporting it, but putting real dollars and investment towards work that many of the activists here today have dedicated their lives to without any financial means, but just pure love and relationship building. This investment is a step towards being able to change the life trajectory of so many of our young men and women who are in desperate need of mental health services, housing, employment, and mentorship. They're not bad kids. They're not thugs. They just need help and support, and we're here to do that work. This investment will be critical in helping us provide these services. I want to acknowledge our NJ VIP members that are all over the audience here today. Please stand up and take your acknowledgement right now. We fought for this money. All the community-based organizations that are getting this award, stand up. Please take your acknowledgement right now. We put this work in, all right? 
And I want to definitely shout out Pam, Will, Stephen, Retha, Brother Zaid, Dr. Pruden, Keisha, Brother Dame, Solomon, Tone, E, Akila, Mona, John, and Robin for tirelessly advocating for this investment with the governor's office and political leaders around the state. We worked hard for this investment, so congratulations to all of us. I know we're going to put this money to work in our respective cities, and I am so, so excited to see all the continued healing we're about to bring. To my PHC team, please stand. This is your work. This is your work for this last year. We put this work in. Be proud of yourselves. Our mission at Patterson Healing Collective is to end this violence once and for all. But we know to make this happen, it takes resources and dedication. Our longtime Patterson community anti-violence activists, Barbara Martinez, Jason Davis, Teddy Martinez, Casey Melvin, Rashawn Dixon, and Quan Hargrove have done anti-violence work for years without any sustainable financial support. Although we are fortunate to have our current partnership with St. Joseph's Hospital to help victims of violence, but now this investment, we don't have to wait until they get shot. We have the meaningful opportunity to do preventative work. We will be able to use this funding to build our army of healers so we can add to our team of new advocates in this work, such as Adam, Sasha, Tamika, Isaiah, Jessica, and Najee, who work tirelessly to help victims of violence in the community. Some of them are recent survivors of gun violence themselves, and they are choosing peace to be the change we wish to see in the city. So it is possible. With this funding, we will bring more mental health services, try to link our loved ones to emergency resources, have more community events to build collective efficacy, and provide more meaningful case management services to help community members in need. In closing, I want to acknowledge our assembly leaders, Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, Assemblyman Benji Wimberly, who met with us, who met with us, and asked us how, to, how can they support us. We thank you so much for listening to us and advocating on our behalf. Also, we look forward to working closely with the city, Mayor Sayeg, Congressman Pasquale, and all of our Patterson Council me members, all the clergy, all the community-based organizations, all the law enforcement, whatever we can do, because we want to support these young people. We don't want to just throw them away. We want to invest in them. Let's work together to continue coming up with innovative strategies to bring the much-needed investment in healing that this city deserves. Most of all, Thank you to the Patterson community, these young folks that allowed us in their hearts and are allowing us to serve you. We're here for you, and I hope that we continue to make you proud. Thank you. Well, that was incredible. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Really a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All I could say is, am I glad I don't have to follow you? Oh, my Lord. Uh, Dr. Chaudhry, to you and all of your extraordinary colleagues, brothers and sisters uh, in, the, in the cause, we take our hat off to you. Jerry, to you and Pat and the union leaders and the sheriff and all members, Captain Murray of law enforcement, we tip our cap likewise to you all. To, yeah, hey, hey. to the congressman, I don't know where we'd be without you, the acting attorney general likewise. America's Mayor Andre the Giant, Shavonda, Benji, all of uh, your colleagues, faith leaders, to the great city of Patterson, New Jersey. What an honor it is to be here today. Let's go out there. And let's keep bending this arc of history toward a safer, healthier future. God bless you all. Thank you. Yeah.